Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the video series on forecasting room availability. I hope you've got the chance to see the first part where we spoke about forecasting in general. What is it? We looked at economic forecasts when we talk about India's GDP growth or we said about when you start your restaurant, how much would you forecast uh, revenues per day, how much sales, etc. My name is Dr. Samir Divanji, and I'm going to take you through the second part of the series, Forecasting Room Availability. So let's continue. We're going to look at useful forecasting data and room availability forecast, besides doing a recap. So uh, as I said, the three terms, in the three P's, the projection, prediction, and planning, yeah? these sum up forecasting in general. So you have to look at it as that, you know, it's a projected future business, all right? It's always for the future. So forecast is a studied prediction of the future. You project a particular based on facts. Now here again, as I said, it's not crystal ball gazing. It is facts. It is data. It is analysis, all right? It's not really guesswork. It is precise analysis of the data that you have and that you gather. So it's a very scientific method, of course. Since it's an estimation, since it's a prediction, since it's a projection, obviously it's it's prone to, um, I won't say failure, but up and down. There are changes, there are variations. So you won't meet the numbers exactly as per the forecast. But yes, if you predict forecast well, then you will come very close to it, all right? So forecasting, we finally said, is the process of making predictions of the future based on past and present data and most commonly or most importantly by analysis of trends all right so you have to have your ear to the ground you have to know what's happening in and around for you to be able to forecast you can't just sit with your records and books and data you also need to know what's happening around very importantly, it's linked to revenue management. We already spoke about it. So you must look up revenue management uh, studies and videos. A quick recap of the benefits. This is very important data for revenue manager to practice revenue management or yield management. We can take selective overbooking based on forecast. We know what are the lean days, what are the valley dates. Valley dates are the ones which are really low and you need to push sales, all right? We know sold out date, so you know what to do for them. And in general, the staff requirement, inventory required, allocation of resources, maintenance, replenishment, if you're planning any refurbishment or renovation activity, special arrangements for groups, all this is possible if forecasting is correct because you know who's coming when and how many are coming when. All right, so let's move on to useful forecasting data. Uh, forecasting, as we said, provides an estimate of the revenue, all right, that should be generated. You can't say, let's open a hotel and then we'll see. All right, no, you have to have obviously some ballpark figures, all right. So the FOMs typically, when they do their forecasting for their department, have to know a lot of things, as I said. All right, so first is thorough product knowledge. They have to be absolutely thorough in that. What, what do they know about? They have to know the hotel inside out, all the areas, all the uh, revenue generating sections, etc. Good judgment about what could happen, all right? With experience and judgment, you also have a little hunch or a gut feel or the sixth sense. So that's also required to some extent. Thorough knowledge of their area of operation, obviously. Profile of the target market, very important. They know, they have to know that the mix, you know, my target clientele, all right, I have 40% manufacturing industry, I have 30% IT, I have 20% tourists, or whatever the segmentation is. They have to know that because based on the developments in those sectors, they will suddenly have a change in revenues. All right. So if I know pharma sector, medicines is big, I need to start targeting it one. And I also need to then forecast according to that. So if I see my client mix or my 
uh, my clientele in pharmaceuticals is very low, then I need to do something about it, of course, and then forecast accordingly. Big events scheduled in the area during the forecasted period. I gave you an example of the air show that happens every alternate year in Bangalore. It's a mega event where Air Force, uh, Air Forces uh, from the world come over. You have the French pilots, you have the British. Everyone comes and participates in that huge aero show and the entire city is blocked. But it happens once in two years. So you have to know what is happening when. All right. It could be a, a pop show. It could be a big musical concert coming in. It could be anything that uh, is really important and will affect your business. Also important to know the percentage of no-shows historically. What's your percentage of no-shows then? We are going to do these formula in the next series, uh, next video in the series, part three, which is the last one. So percentage of no-shows, overstay percentages. How many guests typically tend to extend their stay? Understays, how many check out before their date of departure? All right, turn down statistics. What have you, uh, how many guests have you turned down? because of no rooms or no reservations. You have to know your plans for the future, all right? Are you planning to renovate a floor or a few rooms or change some internally the numbers, some rooms are being converted into suites or some suites are being converted into standard category rooms, addition of more rooms, etc. New property is opening in the vicinity, for sure. You have to know what's happening in the city, all right? In Pune, for instance, last year, a new luxury hotel opened, all right? Or in Mumbai, you know that in your vicinity, there are two more hotels that are projected to open this year. So you have to take all that into account, all right? Because it's the same pie that everybody is buying for, all right? So some business will go to them, obviously. Uh, even guests who are regular with you, typically would like to try something new and they'll be lured by their marketing with great prices, you know, they call it penetration pricing. So they will try to get that, those guests with a really, really great inaugural offer. Knowledge of room occupancy details of competition hotels. This is when I say that you have to have really great rapport with your fellow colleagues or FOMs and revenue managers across the big hotels in the city. Because you share data and in all fairness, you give them data as well about your hotel and share theirs. All right. You don't have to give 100% in detail, accurate data, but you can give a ballpark, which is still good for them for projection. All right. And agree with them about that. Uh, knowledge of competition, renovations, big events, group bookings. So if I know a huge convention is happening at another competition hotel, and that convention is booked 150 out of the 200 rooms, I know a lot of their surplus bookings are going to come to me. So I know those three dates or four days, uh, those dates, I need to uh, be sure that I have enough rooms and then maybe I can up my price also. All right, only for those four dates. So I, I should avoid taking groups for my hotel at least then. So I can get FITs. Uh, cancellation statistics, yeah, what are the uh, number of guests cancelling, washout percentage, we know what is a washout or group attrition or slippage in the terms and terminology videos, we've done that. It is the block that a group, uh, block of rooms that a group books and finally the rooms that they take, that difference is called a washout factor. So they may book 100 rooms, but closer to the date, they may say, listen, we want only 80. So that's the washout. We move to the last bit for now, the forecasting uh, of the room availability. So forecasting of room availability is not done on mere guesswork. As I told you already, it is based on various information. All right, we saw some of it, of course. Now this is specifically rooms we are talking, all right, that we spoke about generally, uh, the hotel or the department one. This is specifically rooms. So you need to know to get the approximate rooms per day, RPD that you're going to do. You need to know arrivals on each day during the same period last year. All right. So in the last two, three years also, it's good to have that data. So all this past data we are looking at here. All right. Number of walk-ins typically historically. 
all right even now the current trends how many walk a percentage of walk-ins or number of walk-ins last month on an average also last year and last year this time if you are in october last october it it makes a difference when you have these figures similarly number of understays guests were checking out earlier than their checkout date number of checkouts all right typically how many guests check out uh, on a on an average day number of no shows guess who make a booking but do not show up number of overstays extensions of their stay beyond their date of departure cancellations all right so this data is extremely important you have to look up your records today thanks to computerized systems and pms any property management system like fidelio or opera or Amadeus or IDS, you can get this at a click of a button. All this data is available for the last month, last year, last three years, and that makes forecasting room availability easier. All right. So it's good to have this data handy so that you can predict or project your room availability and rooms per day that you expect. So this is forecasting. All right. This will help you plan better in every which way great then we'll stopping here we uh i've referenced from Tivari, of course and uh, from other uh, work experience and uh, having worked in the department earlier for many years and uh, there's a quiz the details of it are in the link please attempt it and see you in the next video which is the final video in this series thank you for your time thank you for your patience and thank you for your commitment to be excellent hoteliers.